So I'll briefly show you what I've been doing. This is a group project that I did at Escape Studios for my master's degree in uh, game art. And we recreated the Division franchise game into Central London. So that's a natural history museum. And I was responsible to make the buildings. You can, you can watch the video here. You can see that I've modeled, I've made the architecture in a modular way of making stuff. And that was my final project for my degree. This is what I do, just everything that goes to the environment in 3D space. So that was briefly about myself. And my plan today was to do a simple modeling, then take it to the Opsense Painter, then show you how to import everything into Unreal Engine. But since we have some technical issues today, I'm going to show you how to model the basics of hard surface modeling, I think. So when you open Maya, we have a blank level here. It's in 3D view now. Then since we want to start modeling, I'm gonna go to front view and create a free image plane. So if you want to bring up the menus, you just press spacebar and it will come up with all these menus and I use them quite a lot. It's easier to easier than going into the all the tabs up here. Just spacebar, create anything you want. Now I'm going to select this free image plane. Go to image name up here. And take a reference for my modeling. So I chose to do a Game Boy today. I'm, we're not going to model all the details here. Depends on the time limit. It depends on the time limit we have. So since we've got the reference image in, we'll start modeling from a cube. So, well, we've got the grids here, and we don't really want that for now. So I'm gonna get rid of the grid by clicking on the grid icon here. Then we got rid of the, uh, the grid, and we've only got reference image, and create a cube. So we've got a cube, and then we have to match the width and the height of the Game cube to the Game Boy, so I'm gonna scale it up slightly and to the axis, y axis as well. So now we've got a rough size of the Game Boy, but then if we go to perspective view, it's quite wide. So I'm gonna scale it down slightly on the z axis as well. That looks about right. Then we've got a cube in the middle of our reference image, so we don't want that because we want to see the image. So if I go into that icon called X-ray, you can see the cube going translucent and you can see the reference image as well. So I'm going to the front view for now and then, oh, and then if you go to the front view and the views, you can't really see the shape of the cube. In that case, I'm going to click on the cube and select wireframe unshaded. Then the wireframe is going to stay on the viewport. So we've got a cube to start and we're going to match the general proportion and look of the cube to the Game Boy, Let's say the body. So we want that we want to get that that nice curved edge down the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is go into a modeling toolkit and select those edges of the cube. So that's these edges here, and connect it to give a bit of subdivisions. So I'm gonna do segments of four, maybe three and apply it. 
then we're in the front view again and we can go into select select mode of the components which are vertex edge and faces i'm going to go into vertex select those vertex or vertices and then try to match the profile of those profile of the reference image so we've got the general shape of it it's quite simple and now we want that curved edge of the plastic so what we're going to do is click on that object uh, cube again select the edges where you want to bevel give the beveled values it's still selected but in the front view you can't really see it then if i press control b that comes up with a where you can adjust the values of the bevel. So I'm going to do two, four segments and give it a bit of fraction that adjust the, that adjust the values, how, how much bevel you want to add in the, in the edges. But we've selected those four edges all together. So they're having the same fraction values and it doesn't match the profile of that. So I'll just go back. Select only two of those edges. You can zoom in by pressing F on the keyboard and Control B again. Give it like four segments and match the profile with a fraction value. When you press when you press Control while you adjust the values here, you can do you can do detailed. It the value doesn't jump around. It can you can smooth it out. Then we're going to the top, going to the front view, zoom in, uh, press F to zoom in. Actually, I think I've unselected the edge, right? Control B again, give it four segments again, and match the profile. So we've got quite nice shape, the outline of the shape. Then now we're gonna do what we're gonna do is make the screen here because it's not it's in in real life it's not a it's not a single object it consists of like multiple parts to make something like this right so front view again I'm gonna get another cube and go through the similar process to match the profile of the screen of the Game Boy. That looks about right. Select the edges again, connect them, and select vertices to match the profile. And when the module is symmet symmetrical like this, it's better to select the vertex in position in the same position, in the same height, or where it's symmetrical because it's easier to control. Oh, actually, I'm gonna bring it a bit more down. And you can select the vertex and then adjust the width of it. So we've got a cube in the shape of the screen. I just isolated the screen cube and the reference image by clicking uh, by pressing Control One on the keyboard, so that I can only f focus on the screen screen modeling. I'm gonna select those edges again to give it some rounded edges. Then Control B. I'll I'll give it two segments here. Because because it's because it's such a small part, it doesn't really show that show the hard edges, even though it has little segments in it. So we've got the shape of a screen. Going back to the reference image, 
I'll just duplicate it and leave it there just in case we need a spare. I'm going to hide the ref. I'm going to put the reference image slightly backwards. What we're going to do is take the screen, the space that the screen occupies in the model. So I'm just going to turn the X ray view off. So, what we're going to do is Boolean it. So, look, uh, put the screen space. Where you want it, where you want it to be in the model, select the body of the model, select the screen by uh, pressing Shift and clicking on the screen, and we have a thing called boolean on the right side of the screen. You click on it. This is quite ah. I think it's a new feature in Unreal Engine Maya twenty twenty three. Because it usually comes up with a pop-up, and then now we have a, pull, a tab called poly Boolean here. So the first cube is the body of the Game Boy. <coughs> and, sorry. <coughs> and the se <laughs> second cube is the screen of the Game Boy. So if you go into that tab, that there you it gives you a lot of options, so that's merging two cubes together. Difference A to B, difference B to A, intersection, slice, hole punch, cut out, split edges. It depends. It's really useful when you know what you want to do and what what part of what you want to take out from. So we want to take that screen space out of the body, so we'll make it A minus B. And then you can you can see that it's applied, but then it's still a part of the model. So what we're gonna do to apply it is to go up here, freeze transformation, delete by type. It's deleting its history, so it's gonna delete all the applied functions here, and then it's it's under boolean. So it's a complete model. Now we've got to model. What we've got to model are the buttons. Um, let's start from making these ones. I'll get a cube and just drag it in the middle of the button to match the profile. What I'm going to do here, I'll actually isolate the cube for the button and our reference image. And take the reference image forward. So we've got a cube here, and then we want to have extra face coming out from these sides. So I'm going to left click on the cube. I'm going to face selection mode and select those faces where we want to extrude. And then by pressing Ctrl E in the keyboard, we have an extrude pop up here. And we'll adjust the thickness and by con pressing Ctrl and moving up, moving the slides, you have smoother values. But then the faces are kept together, so we don't we don't have the shape of the cross we want. So we'll turn the keep faces off button so it keeps the faces off. And we have the cross here. And to see the see if the button matches the profile, we can turn back the x-ray on. We'll, um, yeah, it looks about right, but I'll just apply it and then it seems some parts a bit too thick, so I'll just select the vertex here and adjust it. Yeah, that that looks better. There you go. Um, what we're gonna do here is that we create another. We're going to object mode first because we don't want to accidentally move any vertex or edges, Let's turn the x-ray off, then duplicate it just in case we 
knee bed. I'm going to select the button and take it to the front where you want to place the button. Um, you could boolean those the buttons to the body of the Game Boy to make the gap in between it. We'll try that later because when I tried it, it's a bit tricky. Because I'll show you if you. This is easier. So I click the body of the Game Boy, click the button, wooden toolkit, go to Boolean. So I've. To, I've um, I've I've took the part of the button where the space of the button where I'd say volume of the button that occupies in the body. Then I'll try to apply that. Actually, before applying, I'm going to just duplicate the body of it just in case I want that. Apply boolean again. Freeze transform history so that it's built in the built in the body but then the problem here is we have a very gnarly topology here so what we want to do in the game like a th 3d when it comes to modeling whether you model an object or a character whatever you want to keep in cause of triangles if you're modeling a character that you're going to rig or make it move, like animate them, you have to make them in quads, but then it's an inanimate object like Game Boy, <laughs> you can keep into triangles. But then if you see this face here, it has five vertex on it, that's not ideal. And then if you see that, that's just not square. And this is going to cause trouble. So if you have those fa faces more than four vertex, you have to clean the topology up. Then if you keep booleaning stuff, it has the nice profile, the shape of the bo boolean mesh has a nice profile of the shape. But then if you check the topology of it, you have to f spend a lot of time fixing it. There's like easier way to fix stuff. It, then yeah. Just keep in mind that you have to fix the topology, especially when you use Boolean. They, it looks actually it quite looks nice, so I'll just keep it, and we can fix that together later. And we've got a button here. I'll turn the wireframe back on. We've got a button, so we've got two extra buttons to model. So for those ones, I'm going to take a cylinder and rotate it. And then to rotate the cylinder, you press E on the keyboard so that you've changed the gizmo. And then if you press J on the keyboard and rotate it, it snaps on the on degree of five. So I've rotated the cylinder on 90 degrees. Then it seems like the cylinder has too many subdivisions for our Game Boy. So I'm going to press T on the keyboard. And it has subdivision axis for the cylinder. Um, let's go 16 for this. The more subdivisions you have, the more clearing of the topology you have to work on. So you could do 12, 16. I usually do the increment of, in the number of increment of four, because you have to work in quads and four number in, in, in the increment of four works nice. Let's keep it to 12 for this one, because we've got two of the round buttons. So I'll scale it down to match your profile of the button. Then since we have another one, I'll press shift and the, it, it will say clone if you hover around the gizmo on the viewport. So control, clone it and locate it on where you want the buttons. It seems like it's living in the model now. So we're gonna select those buttons and then take it forward a bit. That looks about right. <clears throat> we're just gonna duplicate the buttons just in case if you want them. You can delete it, but I prefer to 
have duplications of each part in the scene because it's easier to go fetch the right measurement. So we want them to have similar, like a dent around the buttons, like the cross button here. So we're gonna make it slightly bigger. And then since we've got two objects here, we want to combine it so we don't have to apply Boolean twice. So if you select the objects you want to combine with, click on one object, click Shift on the keyboard, then go into Modern Toolkit on the right side, and then Combine. You can freeze transform, delete history, then you can even reset the gears mode, like put the pivot point into the center of the object. I try to do that when I whenever I make changes to so like a in like crucial changes or modifications onto model because if you don't do that because Maya works in a history based um it it works on a order of history like history like histories of the of functions you applied so if you don't freeze delete history friends tra freeze transform the histories get confused and you'll apply to work whatever Maya wants to. So I've hit first transform and deleted history, so we want to Boolean it again. So we click on the body, and shift click on the buttons, go into Boolean again, and we've got a Boolean live Boolean preview. Then we, yeah, it seems about right, so we're gonna freeze transform, delete history. There you go, we've got holes for the buttons. And it seems like we've got two extra buttons here. And it, hmm, it seems like we could start from a cylinder, like we made the buttons for the rounded buttons. But when you have different curvature around the model, I tend to start with a cube. So starting with a cube, place on the middle, scale it down to match the profile, the edges that the longest length and width of them, your reference image. So like what we did on the curvature of this edges, we're gonna go into edge selection mode by clicking right, holding right button on your mouse, go into edge, select those edges. There you go. We'll go into the front view again, press F to zoom in, Control B to bevel. I'll I'll give two segments. Then by adjusting the fraction, you can you can give the values you want. And the thing is, if if those if those two beveled edges meet in the middle, it won't be able you won't be able to bevel it further. It seems about right, so I'll just stop there. And since we made, it made the, those vertex meet together, we'll have to check if they're actually merged. So I'm gonna, I clicked on the button, go into Modern Toolkit, and Vertex, and select those vertex. So if you go, if you see the left top corner of the viewport, I've set it to visualize the number of vertex and edges and stuff. It's very handy when you check when you want to check if the vertex are merged or not. And it looks like it's been merged because I've selected four vertex and it looks there's only four vertex here. But if it's not merged, it usually comes up with higher numbers. Then in that case, you'd want to select the vertex where double vertex are. Um, press space bar on the keyboard, edit mesh, and merge. It's got distance threshold, so threshold so you can adjust the values. If you go higher, let's try five. Yeah, it's gonna merge depending on the threshold of the distance. Then if I go higher than ten, maybe fifteen. No, oh, I think that's just all. But yeah, you can adjust threshold, distance threshold to merge the vertex in that case. Then we've got another button here. So I'm going to move it slightly forward so that it comes out. And turn the X-ray off to check if it's actually coming out. 
Let's scale it down slightly on the Z axis a bit. Let's get going too deep. That looks about right. Then go into front view again, go into X ray. You can shift D to duplicate an object and then you can um, move it off from the original object. So I'm going to repeat that again. I'm going to select those two buttons, combine them. I'll duplicate them just in case I want the buttons back. And actually, I, before merging them, I'll duplicate it because button holes are should be bigger than the buttons. So I'll duplicate them first, leave out the buttons, and select the button holes where it's going to be the hole. Uh, press R on the keyboard, slightly scale it up so it has big, it makes bigger hole. Combine them so it's a one mesh. Click on the body. Then shift click on the buttons, boolean it. This is where it goes wrong. So boolean is very tricky because it's hard to it's it's a complicated mathematic functions they say. So let's try freeze transform. Select the body, select the buttons, boolean. It's going wrong again, and I suspect the buttons, because as I mentioned bit, like earlier, there it should be in chords for the computers and programs to translate the object properly. But then it's not even chords; it has too many vertex and edges on one face. So we're gonna fix that and see how it goes. So I'm going to object mode, modding toolkit. When I try to fix my topology, I tend to use multicut a lot. So you can literally cut anything depending on your viewport, but we don't want that. So to make quads, I'm going to start quads and triangles. I'd say quads, but then triangles are out for inanimate objects. So if you, if you go hover around an edge, it's the edge turns to red and then you can click on it and slide it and snap to the vertex and then we're gonna cut from there we want to cut it straight down here so it snaps and press enter I'm gonna do the same thing here so we've split it of one face into three one with a cord and with more than a cord there's various ways of cleaning up topology. It depends on your preference and experience. If if I wanted to make everything quads here, I'd slide that down, snap it to that vertex, and snap it to that. And then we've got six faces here. Or if if I knew that I it was going to be not rigged, not animated, so I can use triangles. I can snap here. Just go into zigzag to create triangles. It, de it really depends on your preference, what your model is going to be used for. But let's keep it quads so that the Boolean function can understand that we want it to function properly. So I'm going to apply that to every face here. Um, so there's in, occasionally multicut tool doesn't work, and then that's because you're not you're not cutting on a clean edge. There must be there should be like some, something like that, like hovering vertex here. That's not and for multicut tool to function, it it doesn't translate very well. So if you if it doesn't work, you have to double check on the vertex and the edge flow. And go back into the edge. Select multi-cut. There you go. We've got the object with all quad faces. Then go back to the entire viewport and then freeze transform, delete history, all centered of pivot, why not? And now I see here it looks like 
It might work, but we can try. If it doesn't work, I know why. Just, just click on the body, shift click on the buttons, boolean it, doesn't work. It's because the main mesh does not is not consists of chords. That kind of face is very harmful boolean to function, so we'll have to quadrangulate the faces again. This is why when the segments of the boolean mesh is important because you have to think about the edge flow um, to clean up later. So if I try to clean up that mesh, there are multiple ways of doing it that also comes from it's up to your preference, up to your experience, up to your where your model's going to be used. But still, if I let's try cleaning up in quads or triangles. So I'll give it a big chunk of cord. Let's try connecting all those vertex in triangles. Yeah, make sure that you hover on a red edge, otherwise it will just go over the line. So you can see this, oh, it just worked. So if if a multicut tool doesn't work, it's something wrong with your topology. So you have to keep an eye on that. So it's basically chords and triangles now for this area where it wants to be Boolean. So we can try it again. Click on the body, shift click on the buttons. And then let me just freeze transform, delete history, center pivot. Click on the body, shift click on the buttons. Boolean it, it still doesn't work. This is why we don't want to abuse Boolean. So I'll leave the buttons here because it's going to take a while if I wanted to fix it now. At least we've got the buttons. And then I'll just replace those buttons because it's got better topology. And then now before we actually put the buttons where the button hole is, we want to smooth that edge out because if you see the reference image, like nothing in real life has harsh edges like that, it's beveled. So we want to go back to our body. I'll isolate it by control, hitting control one the keyboard. Um, when hitting control one, it's not uh, one's not hit on the numpad. It's um, you have to hit control one on the the num numbers up on the letters. So I'm going to choose the edges where I want to bevel. And it might go wrong, and I, if it goes wrong, I know why. So let's give it a try. Not that. This one. So we've got an edge loop selected around the body of the Game Boy. So we're going to control B on it. It surprisingly worked well. I give it two segments, can give some fraction values. That looks about right. And we're applying on it. Cool. Then we're going to select an edge mode, select all the vert edges here. If you have a nice edge edge flow with um, edge loop that go have like a proper edge flow with chords, you will be able to select all the edge loop at once, but we haven't cleaned up the topology yet, so we have to manually click one of those edges because it's not a part of the edge flow. So we're going to control B, give some segment, give some fraction values. And there we go, we have like a nice beveled edges. Go back to the wireframe view. And then we kind of want that to be smooth as well. But then as you see, that's that's not a proper edge flow. The vertex are separate and this face has five vertex on it. This one has five vertex on it. So I want to fix that before I bevel the edges 
or where, where the screen goes in. So I'm going to go into Modeling Toolkit, change it to a vertex selection. Then we can use Target Weld. So there are two options you can target. So you, for much to target is where you literally target to the target to the target, merge to the target. <laughs> and then if you choose center, it's going to merge in the middle of the center of two um, components you choose. For this, I'll just use target. And then you, uh, when using target world, you, you might, there, sometimes you accidentally target many vertex at once and it will ruin the model. So be sure to select only sing, one single edge when you do target world. You can click outside of the object to clear out the selection before you actually target weld. So we've got better topology. And then we're going to select the edge loop around it. Also, we have to manually select it because it's not perfectly quartz. Then let's see how it goes. Control B. And then give segments, maybe two. Bit of fraction. So we've got smoother model here. And then we turn back the wireframe on. And we also want those buttonholes to have smoother beveled edges like this. So we're going to keep beveling. We'll have to clean the topology again. Haha. <laughs> this face came out of nowhere. And this is why you have to keep the faces into chords and triangles, because that was originally connecting the area of like these this area, but then since we've made an um, edge flow that go in that vertex being connected to there, and then this edge doesn't know where to go, so it's kind of it's overlapping the face here. So to fix that, we'll have to sadly manually do it. Delete the face. That's overlapping as well. Delete the face. And then mm, let's do edge selection. You can select both two edges and go into bridge to bridge a gap between. That's not what I expected. Let's see if I have double edges on it. Doesn't seem like it's a, it's a single edge. Try bridge again. No divisions. Hmm. It happens. The, this kind of green face happens when you, when the face doesn't have a value of a shader. So if I just delete it, it's fine. It's not double double faced. I'm just gonna click on it and hold left click on the mouse, assign existing material and Lambert it. Because Lambert is a like a default material in Maya. So it does it now. It has a normal value of face. So it's it. It's got a gray shading on it. So let's keep fixing those faces here. Seems like this can be connected to this bridge. Bridge it again with no divisions. It looks like, because I use Maya 2020, so it might be some different settings in Maya 2023, and it's a quite different function to what I've been using. So you can just keep bridging it, no divisions. You can actually bridge a hole. Then we've got a face with five vertex, so we'll have to go into multi-cut and trying to break that. There you go. We're fixing the topology slowly. And then another thing when you have to keep in mind when fixing the topology, when you can, when, so basically the faces are connected to each other, or the, let's say a vertex, the vertex are connected to each other with faces, but then the faces are holding in a, like kind of a, with a strength, the vertex. 
So if there's too many edges connected to one vertex, that's going to cause something called creasing, like this. It's supposed to be a flat plane, but it looks like something's going on there. And it's because the topology is not right. So we'll try to keep fixing this. We'll bridge it with no divisions. Looks like this could be a chord. This could be a chord. Bridge it with no divisions. And bridge it with no divisions. Then go into existing material, Lambert. There you go. It's not causing any creasing up here, but it's just, it's just this face. It, and then we can what we can try is to quadrify this face. And then when you're fixing a topology, you can because if you see that face, that's just really awkward. And when you're trying to triangulate the faces, oh, there's an option. There's a function called triangulate. When you spacebar, hit spacebar, go to mesh, triangulate. It's it's not great, <laughs> so you just undo that. So we'll have to split the strength between like strength the vertex pulling the faces to each other to multi vertex. So what I do is add another edge loop. It's like a supporting edge loop. So that's what I've done here is that we can now. We'll have to delete that and target weld go into vertex mode. Just, just keep fixing the topology that it has even surface area. That doesn't look right. Mm. Let's say, oh, when you want to when you want to escape from a function from the modern toolkit, you just hit Q on the keyboard and. We'll, Get you out of it. Let's say delete those. Multi cart. Let's try connecting those. There you go. And we know that there is a floating vertex here because the multi cart tool wants to snap on it. So we're going to delete that. So we've got quads and triangles. We're almost there. Multica. It might not work because it's just topology is always trial and error, and you'll have to find a way to work around it. It looks like it's mm, didn't fix it, which means we have to do it again. It's that edge, let's say, get rid of that. Multica with let's say we can, let's see if it does anything if we connect those vertex still doing it then we'll have to get on with it for now yeah you can see a lot of shading issues are going on that you can see the crisp, crisp edges when it's not supposed to be crisp but yeah so since we've boolean this we have to fix that topology as well let's see if we fix, can because no because we want to bevel those edges as well because it's just beveled in our reference image, and it's you don't want to see that harsh line. Let's say, click. So we're gonna tr try beveling all these edges, because that's what we're gonna see. And add some segments, fraction, but you can see the shade. Some the bevel's not working properly because it's not consists of chords, and Maya doesn't know what to do. So we're gonna. Undo that and try quadrify it again. Let's say multi cart. Doesn't look right. Just going to quickly do it so that we can see what's going on for the next stage. Do this and do triangles here. 
Now we can go back to those edges and see if it's going to bevel properly. When you when you want to select edges in a kind of like edge loop or in a group like these ones, you can select one edge um, edge, then uh, press Shift and double click, double click on the next edge, so it selects the edge around like in a line, say. So I've selected Five. those. Let's see. Select all the edges outside. Let's see. Try Control B for bevel. I've left out one edge here. Still not doing it right because the topology for this phase is the 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 strength of the edges pulling the holding the other edges are not the same. So in that case, we we'll have you have to fix it manually, and that's the way. You can see that the shading is going wrong here. So let's see what I can do manually here. It doesn't have to be perfect. If it looks nice, it's fine. Yeah, you can see that something's going wrong here. There you go. And the problem of webbling without proper topology is that you get stuff like faces like that, and that's just not an ideal shape of the chord. So you might have to multicut it, or what I do is target well the thing here and then create another triangle. Looks about right for now. It it's not it's not the best topology, but it's gonna work for now. And then let's bevel those edges as well. Quickly bevel those. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to work like that when the topology around the edges that you want to bevel is line, um, distributed nicely. Give two segments. There you go. Then it seems like we can see weird, harsh lines going around because those are hard edges. So what we can do is go into the edit mode, ed, um, edge selection, go into those, select those edges that you want to them to be smoothed. I'm just gonna not click. I'm just not gonna select everything because we have we still want that hard edges going around because it doesn't really we don't want to see that anyway. Then. Not that one. There you go. And spacebar, mesh display, soften edge. And since this is a cylinder, I'll have to soften these edges as well. Soften edge. There you go. It's smoother than before, but it's still got shading issues. It's all because of the topology is not working great. So that's a lesson there. You have to keep an eye on your topology. We've got harsh ed hard edges here. I'm gonna select those. Soften edge again. There you go. These looks like an hard edges as well. So I'm gonna soften the edge. There you go. Got a general shape of it now, so I'm going to go back to the thing. So we're going to use the same technique for the buttons. So these are the buttons that we left out before. So we're going to isolate them by control, hitting Control 1. Let's start from these buttons. It's going to turn the wireframe on. And then since it's got a nice to pull like edge loop flowing across the geometry, I can just double click on it to select edge loop. And we want to bevel it again. Control B, give it two segments or three or four. It depends on your what you what you want. But then I, I just I usually do two. Just give it a fraction. 
We want that here as well. You can't bevel diff, um, edges all together from different objects because they're different. They're, they're separate, so it doesn't work. So if you want wanted to apply bevel at the same time across different meshes, you have to combine them. Then let's do separate this time. Select all. But we would we don't want the hmm. It seems like it's a different function for twenty Maya twenty twenty three. So I'm just gonna select all. <coughs> And then leave out those because we don't need that extra beveled edges for the back of the button where it's going to go inside the body. So control B again, give some segments, just a fraction to not to make it too smooth because you don't want that chunky buttons. Seems about right here. There you go. Then those buttons as well. Control B again. Seems like something's not right here. Let's see. Let's try merging the vertex. Doesn't look right here. Ah. I'm selecting, um, I'm multi selecting the vertex by holding Control Shift on the keyboard and then doing a, a drawing a marquee square on it. Then let's see, merge the vertex. Still doing something weird. What I can do here is go into object mode. That was the problematic one, just get rid of the faces. Now we know what was happening. It looks like they were double faced. Oh, hmm. so we can. In that case, because we've got the two identical buttons, and it it was the we set the pivot point in the middle. We can just mirror it. Let's say freeze transform to lead history, and then. So it has a lot of settings here. So I'm gonna do. We're gonna mirror it on the axis of the object. Then we want it to the x-axis and then to a plus direction. So let's see, apply that, freeze transform, delete history, select edges. Let's try control B. It's working, but it's not quite working what I ex as what I expected. It looks like it's it's creating double of the object, so I got rid of it. So that looks about right, but we lost the extra edges we added for some reason. I'm not quite sure what's happening here, but we can always fix the geometry again. gonna delete those faces because we're not gonna see it because it's just back of the button. See we've got buttons and if you hide the wireframe this is the hard edges and we will want that. Then we're just gonna delete all the faces at the back of the buttons because we, we don't want that and don't need we don't need them. Just check that you've unselected the faces you want. Delete the back face, and then you can select multiple objects. Go into edge selection, select all the edges. Go into mesh display, and soften edge. We've got a smoother edges around the buttons now. So if I go into front view by pressing spacebar. Um, Maya, then front view here. 
let's locate the buttons where he wants to be. Just turn the wireframe on. It's in the middle of the body, so I'm gonna bring it back forward a bit. Not that I want to scale it. Scale a bit down. Looks about right. Gonna do the same for the rest of the buttons. Go into front view again to align it properly. This looks about right. We don't have the holes for these buttons, but it's fine. So if I turn the wireframe off, then just see the object isolated. It has the shape of it. It's not great because we have a lot of things to fix on in the topology. This is how you make a general shape, how to approach um, mo when modeling an asset. So we've got buttons, we've got the body, and we need the screen space. Um, objects like Game Boy or let's say telephones that with like a black like a black screen on it, and then got extra screen space. It depends on what you want to use the model as, but then if you want to make it detailed, I'd have separate meshes for the screen space because when physically, when like in real life, they have separate screen, like LCD screen underneath, and then they have like a layer of glass on it. So that's why I duplicated the mesh that I used to boolean the space for the glass to go on. I'll just duplicate it again, front view, cut, um, and then I'll turn the grid on. It comes really handy when you when you want when you start modeling an object in the middle of the grid, and then you want to align it back again because it's already in the middle, and the pivot point of this object, uh, this mesh is in the middle. I can I'll hold X on it, and then it's gonna snap on the grid. There's a lot of snapping options up here. You can step to grids. You can turn that on manually and then turn it off. Turn it off. Then you can use shortcuts in the, on the keyboard. You can snap to vertex, snap to view planes. There's you can have many options for snapping on snapping one object to another. So we want the screen, but the screen doesn't need to be that thick. So I'm gonna. Squeeze it down on a X axis, and that looks about right. Yeah. And then even for the glass here, they should be beveled because the the it's not going to have very harsh edges around the glass unless you're going to cut yourself. So, gonna go back to the edges. Select the edges where you want to bevel. And give it a slight bevel here. Control B, give some segments. We don't want that to be like really rounded glass, so we can give it a tighten the value. So it seems like we need to give it some soften, we need to soften the edges here. So I'm gonna go into edge selection mode, select all the edges. What I've noticed is that in previous versions of Maya, if you just go into selection mode and then if you just mark it selected, it will select all the edges. But in Maya 2023, it seems like you can't select the component which you can't see in the viewport. So you will have to rotate around the model and then control shift click to multi select the edges. So I've done it. Mesh display, soften edge, and then also the back of the screen, the glass, we're not going to use it, so just going to delete those. There you go. Then the problem with this model is that it's still not quads. I'm just going to quickly cut the faces into quads and triangles. There you go. 
Then I go into object mode, isolate it. We've got beveled edges here. Seems like that needs to be softened as well. But yeah, that's how you generally approach the modeling when you when you model some object. What I do, um, I usually follow this workflow. I have a lot of reference images and then put into Maya with like a, my favorite one of all the reference image. Um, start with a cube or a cylinder, then trying to trying to apply functions that will match the shape, just generally matching the shape of it, and then I'll add details on it. So if you see this reference image, I'm just going to turn the grid off. It's got some bumps and stuff like that. We can add that one as well. We can try it now. Before that, before adding details, we also we again need to fix the topology here. I'm just going to quickly do it. It's not the best way to retop so it fix the topology, but does the job for now. There you go. Just quads and triangles. So what we want to do is to add those bumps on each side. So let's say, let's isolate the body and the reference image so that we don't touch other parts. Let's control one on the keyboard. We can actually go into edge selection mode. We can select the edges and then we can connect it again. But then again, this is not working because that face is not consistent. It's not quads. So I'll just um, get out of the connect and do it and then multi cut it for now. Let's say that looks about right. So when, when you want to cut straight in using multi cut, you have to you click on the empty space, press shift and just hover it around the empty surface. So we've got a supporting edge loop. So I'm, I'm, I just added a supporting edge loop here to make that cord. And then let's see, we want four bumps on the sides. I'm gonna add three more edge loops. That looks about right. Doesn't look right again. I'll just delete them. And to fix this, I can grab those edges, um, hold shift on the keyboard, extrude it, and then when you when you want to snap it to that vertex, you can hold down V and then move it to snap it on it. I'm gonna do the same thing, hold shift, extrude the face, um, edges, and then control, not control, but hold V on the keyboard, keyboard then snap it. I'll do the same thing here. It's a quick it's a quick way to fix a topology. Extrude, snap, extrude, snap. But then it's currently hovering, so it's not attached. So what I do is select those vertex that was hovering, it's not attached, and then go into the spacebar, edit mesh, merge. So you can see that the, we've selected 35 vertex, but then as I increase the distance threshold, it goes down to 25. That looks about right. So what we want to do here is that we need the bumps, right? So there's multiple ways of achieving that, but what I do now is that to make use of extrusion, I'll select the faces, then control E on the keyboard to take the extrude face function. Give it a bit of thickness. I let's say that's too much. I say that that looks about right. You can offset, but then you want them to be separate. So I'll keep turn the keep faces together off. 
and you've you've got some dents in between. But then again, we don't have the gaps in between because we didn't have we didn't give it enough edge loops here. So it really depends on what you want to do, what you want to achieve. Let's say if I did that, what I select the edge loops. It's not selecting the edge loops. It's fine. We'll try merging them. Yeah, you can you can see that I've selected 120 edge edges, but then as I increase the tolerance, it's going down to 118. So it must have merged something. It hasn't. Okay, let's try. Let's just try this quickly. So we can we can bevel all the edges as well. So we want to give some gaps in between those dents around here. So I'm gonna select the edges, bevel it. So you can see that something's not merged here, but we'll get on with it now. So give it some values here. So and select the faces again, extrude, give some thickness with an offset. They have different values here at the moment, but if you see the front profile, you can see that I've added some bumps and dents that comes up here in the reference image. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the modeling. And the important thing is we have to keep saving the project file. I haven't saved anything yet. So if you go into file, you have a button save scene as. So I'll just be Game Boy, yeah. And then if if the asterisk on the Maya binary file is gone, that means it's saved. And then if you start moving around, it's going to be like you haven't saved yet. Then I will occasionally save it, and then by like I'll save one file in the morning, and then save another one in increments not to overwrite the file in the morning. So I'll have, I usually have like two to three files across the day. So yeah, that was the basic, I was just covering the basics of modeling today. See, just isolated to see what we've done today so far. So is this kind of topology like consist, consisting of course, like what you want to achieve when modeling? Just want to quickly save it and we've got 10 minutes so if you have any questions yeah go wild any <laughs> it seems like there's no questions at all yeah Uh, retopologize tool. Um, yeah, we can use retopologizing option in Maya, but then it's like it's gonna it does it it does its job, but then it's gonna you you end up with those kind of topology. If I quickly show you an example on, let's say, hard surface modeling wireframe. Yeah, this is the kind of topology you want to achieve, like with nice edge flow. So yeah, you can triangulate, you can use triangulate or quadrangulate function in Maya, but then I don't really tend to use it because it tends to ruin your topology in general. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it for today. So thank you everyone. I apologize. They, they did have a question wrong upstairs. Yeah. How would you go about making a realistic crop? In realistic crop? Yeah, but uh, with a limit of a thousand polygons. A thousand polygons. I say if you have a um, limit on the topology, that's not you. It's not going to turn as nice as you want when you go when you want to achieve like a realistic asset. But then you can take that to texturing further. Um, don't have an example at the moment, but. There was an asset where I modeled um, 
like a really old tape deck or something and then I had like a limit on poly count but then I gave more I gave I allowed more poly counts on where the curvy choke goes and then you will have to just uh segments on where you bevel and stuff then you have to compromise where you want them or not you can if you have like a limit on poly count, you ca you can't have sporting edge loops. So you'll have to hit the general look of the model first, and then take into texturing to make it realistic. Yeah. So there is a tip for me. When I was doing modeling last year, uh, our teacher showed us, like he told us, when we were doing the low poly count to a thousand, <clears throat> we told us that we could copy the same like shape of the weapon. Then increase the poly count to what, like sweet mesh, if I recall, that's how it's called, right? Or something like that. And then um, you take both of these files together in substance and you use something called bake mesh. Yeah, you called. can bake the meshes. Yeah, and that actually adds, like, it makes it look a little bit more mm. high poly than it actually is. And it helps the texture. Yeah. Yeah. So baking is another option, but then you have to do something. You'll have to make two versions of the object. So if I just quickly do an example, let's say a cube. Duplicate it, it's not that complicated. Let's say, let's do another cross, like quickly. Extrude the faces, give a bit of thickness. We've got a cross here. So that would be the low poly version of your model. I duplicate it. So there is many ways of making a high poly mesh, but this one's more complicated one. If I do is it mesh tools, I'm gonna add edge loops around where you want the hard edges, what like the curve, like low cur curvature would be. So I, is it, I'm adding supporting edge loops so that it doesn't lose the tension of the edges. It looks like I've done the job. Let's add a few more here. There you go. And then there you can, if you click on the on the mesh, hit three on the keyboard. That that is called some that is a sub subdivision preview. So what it's gonna what it's doing is that smoothing smoothing out the mesh. So if I turn the wireframe off, it's got beveled edges here so what when you press three it's it's doing a preview so if you want to apply that click on the mesh press space bar go into modify and convert the mesh and then smooth mesh preview to polygons if i hit on that that's subdivided the mesh so you're going to take both meshes in substance painter then baking the information of high poly model onto low poly model. So if you if you baked it, it should have all the smooth inf smooth edge information and curvature on that um, low mesh file. But then there's an uh, extra step to do that. You have you have to UV unwrap the low poly modeling first, and then you don't have to model UV unwrap the high poly mesh. Just uh, you've unwrapped the low poly mesh, take that low poly mesh into Substance Painter, and then in the baking option, you have a tab where you can get your high poly mesh. So yeah, that's uh, like a basic, ba basics on how baking works. Cool. So it's almost time. Thank you everyone. I'm sorry for the technical issues earlier. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.